Whether we are traveling down a busy street or relaxing outside a coffee shop, our lives are positively impacted by the work of engineers. While engineers are out there paving the way towards safer cars and alternative fuels, an increasingly active area of research is the development of ever smaller components that make up everything from your laptops and cell phones to powerful new medical devices. More often than not, macroscopic structures are built by picking and placing objects piece by piece. But to do this at extremely small scales, where objects are too small to see with the naked eye, we need to use different methods. One such method involves the phenomena known as self-assembly. In nature, many things self-assemble. Flowers start as tiny seeds and follow a natural progression until they reach their beautiful mature forms. Rocks and crystals also form by self-assembly, with tiny molecules rearranging into complex three-dimensional geometries all on their own. Motivated by this phenomena, Dr. David Gracias and his students at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, developed the novel way of transforming two-dimensional shapes into very precise three-dimensional objects. Consider, for example, the construction of a paper cube. Dave, a senior in Dr. Gracias' lab, attempts such a feat. He begins with six cutout squares. By carefully taping the squares together to form sides, Dave is eventually able to make a cube although it takes him a few minutes and it has many imperfections. Tim, on the other hand, is a graduate student, and he takes a very different approach. He simply cuts out a single shape, which he then easily is able to fold into a cube, saving a lot of time. In the laboratory, we use a process from the computer chip making industry called photolithography to make our 2D shapes on a miniature scale. First, a mask is created. It is used to expose a specially prepared silicon wafer and the areas that are hit by the light dissolve away. This leaves a mold behind which is filled with metal, forming the cube faces. This process is repeated, connecting the faces with another metal that functions as the hinges. Once the two-dimensional structures have been prepared, they are heated until the hinges begin to melt. As the hinges melt, they ball up in order to minimize their surface area, and since they are attached to the square faces, this brings the faces together and eventually forms a cube. Now let's see an actual video of self-assembly in action. It's pretty cool, isn't it? and we may have created the world's smallest dice. These metal cubes can be remotely manipulated with a magnet. They can also be used as nanoliter containers. Here, they are loaded with a chemical that forms a pink trail in solution. And one day, these self-assembling cubes may allow us to mend a broken heart.